Welcome back to Kevin's Trooper channel. This is the channel where I got a new welder and I'm pumped up about it. Let's get this thing hooked up and see how it runs coming up. I could not wait till Friday to get here so I'd be off work so I could play with the new welder. This is the Everlast iMig 200 and it came in Tuesday and I was pretty happy with the way that it was packaged. Uh, the only thing that was a little iffy was the accessory box didn't have any kind of padding or anything. All the accessories were just kind of thrown in there. Nothing was damaged though, but that could have been packaged just a little bit better. And then uh, that afternoon I went to hook the welder up. So you can see I've put this rubber hose here so whenever I lower this, it'll have something to rest on. Now Everlast does a little bit different technique whenever it comes to their wire size on, on their roller. They have two different ones. They have one that says 0.6 and the other side says 0.8. The 0.8 works for 030 or 035 wire and the 0.6 works for your smaller wire and then they gave me another one that works for 035 or larger. So I'm going to put the larger one, the 0.8 in, which will be the one that it rolls on because I have 030 wires. Now we're going to take our new spool and figure out how this comes off and it looks like that's going to go just like that. And it barely fit in the new cart that I designed but it did fit. Now that we've got the spool facing the right way and we've got the welder plugged in, I'm going to take a little piece of my wire. We're going to thread our wire through. We're going to place it in the liner. We're going to make sure it's in the groove and we're going to turn the welder on for the first time and we're going to turn our wire speed up where it'll move. Now you want to make sure this is tight enough that it's not going to free spool and cause a bird's nest but you also don't want it so tight that your rollers have to strain because that's hard on your motor. Now I'm just going to test how and that's perfect. I could stop it with my finger but it took a little bit of force. I think that's adjusted about right there. The cart could have been slightly bigger if I ever get a bigger welder or to have a little bit more room but it fit fine. And then we got it hooked up to the gas, the C25. Now, most welders come with a chart in the door that's going to get you close. And this one doesn't have one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to design my own custom chart. As I find a setting that I like for a particular metal, for a particular weld, for a particular joint, I'm going to write that down and make my own chart. So pretty soon I'll be able to look up my exact favorite settings, set it for that, for every possible metal and joint combination out there. Now a really good starting point for me was this welding pocket reference book. This, if you're new to welding, this is full of very valuable information. I've really read almost this whole thing, except they do have some things in here about underwater welding and that, but for MIG and stick and TIG, this thing has a lot of great information in it. And if you're new to welding, you really need one of these. I will link this in the description so that you can get you one of these. I think this was under $10, if I remember right. Great little reference book. So we're going to work on that a little bit today and see how this thing welds and see if we can figure out some settings coming up. Now the first thing that I did was I cleaned some metal. I wanted to make sure that I got all the mill scale and all of that off. And it fits great in my MIG holder, by the way. Now, this machine has a very nice digital display on it with this cover that protects all of your knobs. And also, this has an adjustable arc force, which I think they call that inductance. And that's the quality of your arc, how crisp it is or how buttery smooth it is and your personal preference. And the other really neat thing about this machine is it has something called burn back control. And what that does is it sends a little bit of voltage out to the end of your wire to melt it back to however long you want it to begin the next weld. 
it saves a lot of time clipping and trimming wire. So I wanted to play with all of that today and see if we could get those settings fine-tuned a little bit. Now I'm actually going to turn my arc force down because that arc seemed pretty violent to me. It seemed pretty um, snappy and I don't want that. I like a softer, more buttery arc. So I'm going to try it a little bit lower today. And I'm going to bump the voltage back up. We're going to go to 19 and a half. That turned out to be a pretty decent weld right there. It's piled up a little bit more than I would like. I tell you what, it is such a different feel welding with this than that little Lincoln Handy Core. It is a big, big difference. This thing just is so much smoother and snappier and cleaner I can actually see my weld puddle that flux core welder is so dirty and smoky you really do a lot of guessing when you're welding with that and with this one I can see so much clearer exactly what I'm doing and what I'm working with man I love this new helmet I had a situation happen to me the other night. Even though I never flashed myself, and I didn't really even do that much welding, I still had a situation where I burned my eyes a little bit. About 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, sand in the eyes. And if anybody's ever experienced that, you know that that's not fun. Now fortunately, mine wasn't a really severe case. But I don't really understand that because I wore my helmet the whole time. And I tell you what it was, cheap welding helmets. It's not a good idea to go with a cheap auto darkening welding helmet. The helmets over there on the wall I've been using are 30 and $40 welding helmets. If that's all you have to spend, you're better off getting a high quality fixed lens instead of trying to go with a really cheap auto darkening lens. So what I did was invested in the Lincoln Electric 3350. Now, what I like so much about this, number one is it has a huge viewing area. When you put this on, you, you get such a better view than looking through a little space like this. And sometimes with those cheaper helmets, I would even get like this double vision where I would see, you know, the glass wasn't in there exactly straight. This is your eyes, guys. You only get one pair of these. If you're gonna weld, you really wanna take care of them. I wear these UV safety glasses underneath my welding helmet. So I have two layers of protection. But this is the highest quality optical glass that you can get in a welding helmet. It's like having a pair of sunglasses on. It is amazing. And the other thing is you have all of these adjustments in the headpiece to where you can get it to fit you just right. And the other really cool thing that I like about this is it has a little lock on it. So as I go to push this up, it has a little notch that locks in place. And so you don't have to sit there and try to, you know, break your neck to try to get the helmet to come down. It's just one little nod and then you're welding. This thing is super nice. And yes, it was a bit of an investment, but so are these. Listen, I researched welding helmets for a long time, weeks. I looked at all of the higher quality ones and this is one of the less expensive of that upper echelon of welding helmets. This was about 50 to $60 cheaper than any of the other ones, and it has a higher quality glass and a larger view area. 
It's not quite as expensive and you get a whole lot of bang for your buck. Now yes, it doesn't have all those decorations all over it, but they did send it with a package of stickers. I could put stickers all over it if I wanted. I'm not out to impress anybody. I'm out to save my eyes. And this Lincoln 3350 is a really good choice to do that. I have been so impressed by it so far and I'm really, really glad to have it. I'm gonna lay a couple of more beads here and then we'll set it up for stick welding and try a little bit of stick. That's better. Well guys, I'm still here just dialing in the machine and I've come to realize that the hotter I make my weld, the better it looks. I think I've been welding a little bit too cold and honestly, I don't, I don't know that much about looking at a weld and going, well, that's too cold. Oh, that's too much wire speed. I don't, I'm not there yet. I want to make beads like Fifth Street Fab so bad. It ain't working. <laughs> hey, if you guys want to see some pretty welding, check out the channel Fifth Street Fab. I mean, he can make a MIG weld look just like it's been TIG welded by an expert. I mean, just beautiful patterns. And for the life of me, I just can't get mine to do it. All right, we're getting it dialed in, guys. <clears throat> Let's do some stick welding. I haven't done stick welding since high school, since FFA in high school. <laughs> That's going way back. You know, when I first started uh, welding with this, the, the arc was real harsh, and I now have the arc force turned all the way down to two, and it's just buttery smooth arc. You can definitely feel a difference, even being a beginner like me. You can definitely feel the difference in that arc force on how snappy and sharp you want your on you want your arc. So yeah, let's do some stick welding. And the neat thing about the stick welding is I don't have to remove the MIG gun. I don't have to take my wire out. All I have to do is just plug my stinger into the positive there, throw an electrode in, switch it to stick, and we're stick welding. And both of these 7018s and 6011s are both DC electro positive. So I'm gonna leave the welder exactly where it's at. And I, I love my electrode shelf here on the welding cart. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's see how this turns out. This is a 6011, so I'm doing a little whip and pause. I guess you could call that. I've been shopping for a new pair of welding gloves, and I settled on these. These things, I'm so glad I did. They're the Olsen. They are amazing. And these are $18. I mean, I can feel every little thing that goes on in these, where those big old Lincolns that I had, I couldn't hardly feel anything with them, and they were a lot more expensive than these. So I'm real happy with this little $18 pair of welding gloves. They seem very protective. My hands haven't gotten hot once. And I just did some stick welding and MIG welding and picking up hot metal and I haven't even felt any warmth in them yet. 
Let's open up these 7018s and give them a try. Now these are 1 8 inch 7018s, big boy electrodes. <laughs> I'm starting to kind of like this stick welding. The strange thing about it is that you have to get used to the rod getting shorter. So you constantly have to get that rhythm of this plus going down plus going sideways. It's just kind of a strange sensation to get all that down all at the same time. Now the technique that I'm using here I learned off of Jody off of Welding Tips and Tricks channel. This guy knows so much about all different aspects of welding. He has a great channel. You guys should check him out. But he, he was talking about this technique where you start here and you put your pinky and your thumb on this pinky and then as you weld you can collapse it down like so. So that's what I've been practicing. Look at that! That's starting to look like a welder right there, ladies and gentlemen. Mostly gentlemen. <laughs> I like it. This is what you would call a modern art disaster piece. Well that does it for me today. The Everlast iMig 200 gets a two thumbs up from the KTC garage. I got a lot of practice to do so that I can weld as good as it can because it can weld. I'm going to post a link in the description for everything that I've used today. If you guys want to go down and take a look at that, it'll be in the description below. And don't forget while you're there to hit the subscribe button and join our great group of guys that we have here. And give me a thumbs up because you know it means a lot to me. Thank you guys. We'll see you in the next video.